Hello and welcome, or welcome back. I realize it has been a hot minute. I'm forgetting where my camera is. I'm trying out a new new spot to stream from because I got space, so might as well use it all. I know this is we used to this had been my Friday show, but I don't know how much shop my stashes I have left. So I thought let's have Saturday sewing lessons from the American Dressmaker book. <gasps> Loki, I forgot to bring over snackies. I forgot to bring the snackies over. Oops. Loki's very upset. I literally forgot the snackies. Um, all right, hold on. We are having technical difficulties. I'll be right back. Okay. All right, Loki. You win. You heard me. You were like, those are the sounds of snackies. Oh, big boy. Come on, Freya Freefers. Do you need some snackies? I know. I heard you already have minnows, so we can't have too many snackies. Oh, big hugs. Big hugs. Freya Freefers. Come on, girly girl. Come on. Oh. Loki's batting snackies out of my hand. All right, just one more, because I heard you had minnows already. Oh. Okay, snackies have been had. We don't have any sponsors, but... Friskies, Freya Froofers really likes your snackies. Hook me up. We have no sponsors, but I do have some affiliate links because I really enjoy the streaming software, wave.video.com. And where are we? Were we? Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Phoenix Electra. This is the stitching less sewing lessons from the American System of Dressmaking which is available for free at archive.com. There's a link in the downstairs area. Also, thank you everybody who is following us over on the Rumbles. We have 22 Rumblers and I woke up this morning to 201 Rumble likes. So you guys are crushing it. YouTube, I'm still at 12 subscribers, but if we can get 88 more subscribers, followers over on the Rumble, we will start live streaming there because I'm cheap and do not want to pay $10 a month to stream on Rumble, but I want to. So let's get to 100, please, heart you. So where were we? So last two weeks ago, we drew a whole bunch of threads only to realize that used the wrong fabric that was making it more challenging. So I found this canvas and drew threads, did the basting line. So let us see if we can understand these directions. So where were we? So all oh, that's right. This is for doing a hem. Turn the hem. Do, 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 do. Did I still do this wrong? From four to six inches, depending upon Depending, of course, upon the texture of the fabric, more being drawn when the fabric is fine than when coarse. Turn the hem, creasing the edge one sixth, and baste it even with the threads drawn. Fasten thread in the hem and take up an equal number of crotches. Careful not to take the stitches too deep. Repeat until hem is finished. All right, well, let's, let's see if we can unpack this again. So, mm, 
let's see here, fasten the thread in the hem. So again, oh, we can't see what I'm doing. Well, I'm not going to make a knot. I'm going to do my little, like, loop-de-loop-de -loop thing here. I need more cameras, don't I? We might be rectifying this in a couple next week. We will see. Missed you all. It was so weird not live streaming while I was gone, but I had, like, travel and family things and stuff. Take one. Okay, so... Let's see here. This doesn't... This, it's a good thing I'm not really being judged on this because I'm pretty sure of all the lessons so far, I, all my work would be just get sent back. I feel like you are not good enough. So we're just going underneath some of the drawn threads. Looks like we go under and then make a stitch at the bottom. This, I'm confused on this one. Like, can we just get to the... No, that... Yeah, this, I don't completely understand this, but we will see, because we only learn by learning. We don't lose by trying. This kind of looks like the picture. I'm glad I remembered to... I have a contrasting thread so that I can actually show y'all what this shenanigans is pretending to look like. Going through all these lessons mostly so I can get to the drafting section so I can make that skirt. Ugh. And I'm hearing things from outside. Eeks. There's no creepers. No creepers. I mean, except for the creepy cats who live in my house. So 
I think this is what we've got. Focus. Too much stuff in the background. Okay. So yeah, our focus is way off, but we're pretending. And I am probably not gonna do really this entire line of this but that kind of looks be careful to tape repeat until hem is finished the stitch may be worked from either left or right but hem must be held in opposite position when working so it's like you go under or through of the drawn stitches And then at the bottom, where you started the underneath, you make a little stitch to close it. And sometimes you get knots in your thread. So I'm going through like four. And then put one into the starting position. I think I think that's it, but let's get on to the French scenes, cause why not? Why not? Cause these lessons are gonna take us forever. And I'm gonna just trim off that knot. Do I have little white pieces? No, of course. I only have the green felt. Am I? <laughs> and of course, if we've got green, I should probably not use the purple thread because we're just we're just gonna have to we're just gonna we're just gonna okay one strip pieces. All right, we can do a French seat now. All right, so let's do the short end. French seam. This is done by making a narrow seam on the right side, then trimming it closely and evenly. Turn the seam on the wrong side, crease it smoothly, and take up another seam about one-fourth of an inch more or less. This must be this must fully cover the edges of the first seam. So it looks like they're just going to do a running stitch. And since this is practice, we will also just do a running stitch. Okay, so we've knotted. Okay, two pieces. That you can't see. I'll just 
just doing these little rocking running stitches like I enjoy doing. And, uh, French seams, they, I do enjoy this seam a lot. I use it a lot on the sewing machine because I like my edges to be nicely finished. Though when you're doing it for realsies, the number of times I've had to rip things out because I sewed the wrong sides together. Yeah, good times. Here we're just practicing little samplers. Do, do, do. All right, so we have I do not understand why I can't get you to focus right now. Okay. One side, done. Then I'm going to try not to break things that I already broke. Going to open it up. Oh, that's right. If they do say to trim this, I made it very narrow, so I'm not going to bother trimming because it's fine. But if you use too much you really do need to that can be important and it's almost easier to do this hand stitching because you can feel where the you can feel the two the material that you're encasing on the inside you just want to stitch outside of that or you'll be like me and have to go through and trim stuff. So now, because those pieces are actually this, now we have wrong sides facing. So those little inside gloopy bits end up showing on the outside, and that's not pretty. Have you left stuff and had to trim it later? Um, yeah, maybe. But. You only get better from learning and practice. Let's see here. We are ready to turn the page. And probably for realsies, you'd want, like, yarn that's not contrasting. But since I'm attempting to show stuff on film, even though things are not focusing, I like the contrast. Are these stitches even and pretty? Definitely not. I've just missed hanging out and going through these sewing lessons with you. It's like all week, I'm like, is it, can I stream again yet? I was going to stream yesterday. I had everything set up. I was so exhausted. Jet lag is real. And then, I don't know, allergies, cold. I don't feel sick, just mucusy and weird. I'm just exhausted. So I slept and watched Freeform Friday on America's Untold Stories with Hunley and Gruber, Gruber, and Robert Barnes, and it was good. So I showed up today, and boy howdy, do we have a stitching bitch for tomorrow? I have so much to talk about. No spoilers early, but boy, oh boy. 
All right, so let us let's see here. So my I do not know why I can't. Okay. okay, so this is the inside, and here's the outside. All right, one French seam did. So fortunately, I knew how to do that one. Let's see here. Next up, we are on to the fell seam. A fell is a seam hemmed down to a... is hemmed down to conceal a raw edge. It is made by trimming off one edge of a seam very close to the stitching and turning the other edge under and down, down flat to cover the short or raw edge. Press hard with thumb, then baste and hem. All right, so it sounds like we're gonna need another little piece here. Okay, new piece, to the old piece, okay, thread, no. Okay. Again, we're just going to, it doesn't say anything, so running stitch it is. That's right, I was going to pick out some music to play in the background, then I forgot. Oh well, maybe next time, or we'll work on that for tomorrow, because we're always trying to level up. And of course, I forgot to tell people I'm streaming. <gasps> hello, hello, hello! Let's see here, the audio is great with that orange... Let's see here. Thank you, commenter. The audio is great. That orange on your eyelids really pops. And it... Okay. All right. Well, hope things are good. And I'll try to be funny to make your time away as amusing as it possibly can be. I'm sorry. We'll try to be more funny. But yeah, this orange, I like was like, I want to look like a clown. A pumpkin clown. And I think I did. Ah, oh, I've been looking at a new camera, actually a video camera. And of course, the place that I really enjoy want to support is this I don't even know if they're a mom and pop, a uh, little, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. They're in New York City, and they're good Jews that are like, I couldn't even order things today because they are literally closed until the end, their check, their, 
you can't order things until Shabbos is over and their in-store is closed for Sukkot. And I've got some questions, so I don't know. All right, so first layer done. I'm going to trim that and let's see here. I'm going to actually trim. Okay, so then you're supposed to trim. So this layer is already little, so you're going to carefully fold back the top the layer you do not want to trim and gently carefully carefully without cutting stuff inappropriately trim and because this top layer is a little big I'm going to give that a little whack too All right, so we are all trimmed and trimmed. Time for a new knot, and then to consult the destructions. I kind of like this seat though. I'm a little bit more comfortable here, and the lighting is not quite as washed out and funny from the other spots in this room. But we're just gonna try out every room in the house, as I can. So let's see here next. Oh, do 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 do. It is made by trimming off the edge very close to the stitching and turning under and down and baste and hem. Okay, so we're going to make a little turn down. And then turn over again so that everything is enclosed. Then we're going to find my thimble and we are going to baste. Okay. Okay, knots. We are basted. All right. And we're going to trim this. And then we are going to hem it down. Did I? Okay. Let's just. Okay, just making sure that we remember their version of the hem stitch. All right, so let's make another knot. Pull so hard on this old yarn thread. I'm just gonna pretend that we're a fine stitcher and take little nice dainty stitches.
That was too big. Ugh. I think I would like fail this class. It's a good thing we're just doing this for, for you and me's. Let's get to this. Let's get to the edge of this, and then let's see how many pages are left in this first lesson. Just because I'm curious how many years it's going to take for us to get through this whole book. But I'm pr feeling pretty good, so maybe we, we can. So we'll, we'll stitch a little bit more today. I'm not ready to stop more stitching lessons yet. What's up, Fru? I see you. Oops. Creepy goobings, Tins. All right, one stitch felled. Or one seam felled. One stitch felled. <laughs> Okay, there's the ins there's the outside and there's the inside with our filled hem. Next is French knots, which eh, you know how to do these, but let's read their destructions. Draw the needle and thread through the material to the right side and take Uh-huh. I got my ins uh, ha, 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 ha. Oh, whatever. Okay. To the right side and take one short back stitch. Hold 
hold the needle in the right hand and with the left take hold of the thread near the material and twist the needle around the thread two or three times. Okay, this is a funny thing. So you hold it, you take your needle and you go one, two, three, and then we're gonna stab it back through. Try not to pull too tight or it looks funny. Boy Jove, we did one. Let's do another one. Our fabric has purple polka dots, or two dots, French knots. There! Are you showing up on the screen? Nope, and you can't see them. We're having all sorts of fun this today. Okay, buttonholes. Let's see here, how many pages are left? Well, this is page 11. Close your eyes if you don't want to see me scrolling. Oh, this is a lot about reading buttonholes. Oh, smocking, okay. Let's do this reading. Because I want to get to the smocking section. So bad. Actually, I have fabric, different fabric, picked out for that part. So, let's... Let's read this, and we might jump ahead a little bit, because I'm anxious. But that will probably be next week, so don't hold your hold your horses on. All right, next. Buttonholes. A buttonhole is an opening or slit in a garment to receive a button. Who would have thought? It is always made on double material except in flannel, and frequently a third ply is put in to give it additional strength. One of the most noticeable faults seen in buttonholes is that result is that resulting from cutting the slits so that there is a break in them which causes the edges to stand apart and produces an uneven or jagged edge. This fault is frequently caused by the use of dull scissors or from the habit of cutting a buttonhole with two or more clips of the scissors. And again, it may be due to the slipping of the fabrics, which are very thick, soft, or elastic. If one hasn't a good pair of buttonhole scissors in her possession, special care will need to be taken in measuring and marking the buttonholes before cutting to get each exactly the same. The diameter and thickness of the button will determine the size of the buttonhole. It being cut a little larger than the button it is to receive. The thick button, of course, requires more room in proportion to its diameter than the thin. Buttonholes are generally cut one-fourth of an inch from the edge of the garment, the spacing between them being controlled by fashion, the size of the buttons, and by the looseness or tightness of the garment. They are usually cut in a horizontal position, but on shirt waists are but on shirt waists are frequently cut vertically first mark the place of the top and bottom buttons and then divide the space between equally for the number of buttons if one is inexperienced in buttonhole making it is well to practice cutting them on a piece of material for that purpose until the buttonhole can be cut exactly the size intended 
each a uniform distance from the edge of the material and from each other before they are cut with the buttonhole scissors. Oh, before cutting on the material in which they are to be worked. If they are cut with buttonhole scissors, set the scissors according to the length of the buttonhole required, testing it on the practice material, cutting from the notched part of the blade to the point of the scissors. In some wash materials, the buttonholes may be worked by the use of a piece of cardboard and tracing wheel, but where the marking cannot be made distinct. In this way, use lead lead pencil or tailor's chalk. Hold on one moment here. <laughs> All right, we have returned. Hello, Freya Frufas. Yeah, you like me doing being here better? You like this when I'm talking here better? The cardboard for, mark for marking a horizontal buttonhole should be the length of the buttonhole plus the distance it is to be from the edge of the garment and as wide as the buttonholes are to be apart. <laughs> Having a mark on either edge of it indicating where the buttonhole is to begin. If a buttonhole scissors if if a buttonhole scissors having a gauge is to be used, the length of the buttonhole need not be marked. It will be sufficient to mark the starting point only and the line showing the exact direction of the slit so that the buttonholes are horizontal. Buttonholes are, are horizontal. They will be perfectly parallel or if vertical they will be in line with each other for a vertical buttonhole see that both ends are marked exactly the same distance from the edge of the garment before cutting in cutting buttonholes in front of neck band and cuffs an allowance of about one eighth of an inch should be made in the slit as the buttons will take up that much that is make it one eighth inch nearer to the edge of the garment than where no allowance for buttons are re required. When making buttonholes in thick cloth, baste the cloth smoothly where each buttonhole is to be made, then put two rows of machine stitching or back stitching the length desired and cut between the rows. One should keep a piece of undissolved glue with their sewing things and when making buttonholes in wiry goods mark them moisten the edge of the glue and rub over the place for a buttonhole on both sides before cutting when dry the glue will hold hold goods firm so they will not fray while working fascinating so i guess they did have an old-fashioned version of old-fashioned version of stay stitch which was stick glue i wonder how that relates to like a modern glue stick. Does anybody know? Could you let me know? Comment? Help me? When working buttonholes in a lace yoke or waist, first baste small squares of lawn under each piece where the buttonhole is to be worked. After working, cut away the surplus lawn around the buttonhole, leaving them firm and strong. Also, put small squares of the lawn under each of the button, under each button. A buttonhole should always be worked from the right side of the garment and on the right hand side of a woman's garment. On woolen materials, work the buttonhole with the buttonhole twist, being careful to have the twist one shade darker than the goods as it is as it always works lighter. Cut Cut and work one buttonhole at a time, overcasting it immediately after it is cut. Begin without a knot, taking two or three running stitches on the wrong side, then hold the buttonhole along with 
the forefinger of the left hand with the edge of the garment towards the wrist. Begin the buttonhole at the lower right hand side of the slit, bringing the needle up from underneath close to the edge, overcast from this point on both sides of the buttonhole, taking the stitches Okay, we will get back, okay, we will get back to this. All right, thanks for hanging out. It's been great. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't wait till tomorrow when you can be fabulous today. And if you haven't laughed at others, if you haven't laughed at yourself, don't be laughing at others. All right, bye.